Welcome to BA 245, Chapter 3, Alphabetic Indexing Rules 5 through 8 for the 9th edition. We've already learned some basic information of the rules 1 through 4. Basically, if it's a person, what are we going to do? How are we going to index? Last name, first name, middle initial. Then we also learned about cross-referencing. If it's hyphenated, we'll put a little cross-reference card over and do that. If it's a business, what are we going to do? We're going to leave it as, we're, the business names we're going to leave as is. If it has the word the at the beginning, we'll stick at the end. Both personal and business names we're going to uh, remove all punctuation, correct? So, what else could there be to talk about? Rules 5 through 8, build on that and keep drilling down into questions you might have and how to work on those. Let's see what it brings up. Titles and suffixes. Personal names, what would be an example of a title? Doctor. Mr. Mrs., I don't know why we consider those, but we do. Professor or Sir, Admiral, Military, Titles, Captains, Royalties. That is a title. Now your suffix, you could have a seniority. What's a seniority? Junior, Senior, First, Second, Third. Who comes first? Professional suffix. Like my initials, I have initials after my name. People who are certified public accountants have CPAs after them. I have CAP hyphen OM, comma, MBA. Um, other people have other titles. RN, MD, CRM. Those are professional suffix, and the, is, that's the last unit. If they're numerical, they're placed in order before alphabetic, meaning... 1, 2, 3. Numerical means 1, 2, 3. First, second, third. Not junior, senior. Junior, senior would still be in the same alphabetical order. But the 1, 2, 3's are going to come in front of the junior, seniors in our list. Alright? Single names with royal or religious titles. Single names. Who do you know a royal or religious person that has a single word with their name? Prince William and his dad, Prince Charles, and his uncle, Prince Andrew, and his brother, Prince Harry. I have absolutely no idea their last name. Queen Elizabeth. I have no idea their last name. Right. They have, I remember when Charles and Diana got married, they had lots of names in there for them. So, not all of them last names. Um, any religious figures that you can think of? The Pope. I believe the Pope goes like Pope John Paul the 17th thousandth. <laughs> something like that. Okay. Uh, try another one. Sister Mary Margaret. Mother Teresa. Um, Gandhi. I think of that one and that's, but it's only one word so we have, we don't have to think of anything. We don't have any issue. We just, we just file them under Gandhi. Right? Mm-hmm. But that's how he's referred to all the time as Gandhi. Anybody know his full name? Do you know his full name? Mahatma? Mahatma Gandhi? That doesn't even flow anymore. I'm so used to Gandhi. All right, but we have the idea. There are some people that we only know them by their title and a name. So here's some examples. Father Paul, bam. But look at, that's number one, but look at number five, Bishop Bernard Hyatt. Why don't we put Bishop first if we put Father first and Father Paul? Because there's a last name. That's your key. That's your trigger point. If there's a last name, you treat it as a regular person name. If there isn't a last name or there isn't a first name, uh, you simply treat it as their title as their first name. I'm sorry, their title is their key unit. Right. This is also showing how Roman numerals 2 and 3 would come before junior and senior.
Okay, now if you have a business, guess what? We're going to leave it just as it's written, except we're going to move the to the end. Captain Hook's bait shop, exactly how it looks. Dr. Payne's windows, exactly how it looks. Mr. Mom's daycare, exactly how it works. Number six, Prof's tutorial service, the. Comes down to the end. So we're used to this look. I am going to pause the video and we will practice. Those of you that do not have an account at Course Master may check out page 67 in your book. That was an energetic exercise in figuring out those uh, self-check, but we did it. So now we move on to rule six. It talks about articles and particles. What did we already learn in rule maybe, I don't know, two? Articles, what are articles? The, two more, a and the, those three words we learned were articles. Well, we've got some more things to say about it now. So here we are, we've been telling you that every word is its own indexing unit. Now we're going to come back and say, well, wait a second, uh, bringing it all together, some things don't get separated. And please don't be working ahead because you'll miss this stuff and then you'll be bored in just a minute anyways. So what we're saying here is any article or particle. What's a particle? I can deal with the Vanders, the Vander Sluices, the Vander Mices, the Vander go get the Vander everybody that we've got here in the Dutch community. I can deal with all that. I can run those together. What I don't understand is San Francisco. I would think that would be two words. But it's con San is considered a particle. Also what I'm not used to is um, it's a particle. It's I'm not also used to um, Saint. I would think Saint would be its own word. Um, but Saint is going to get run together. Spaces are disregarded in these things. There's a whole list here on page 69. Right, the O'Toole's. The Purr, the Saint, the Tens, the, all those vans. So some of these we're, we'd be comfortable with, some of them are new to us. And if you're looking in the book, look down on number nine. Edward Saint, I don't know how to say this, Sire, Seer. Um, they want to run that together as one word. That's what I'm saying is I I'm used to, I would think that Saint would be one word on its own. But because it's a particle, it stays with it. Um, San Suchi Restaurant, Saint Edwina's Art Club, those are going to get put together. All right, so there's, so we're really getting into the nitty gritties. What's happening? I'm going to pause the video, and we will go to work on our self check for rule six. All right, we finished that exercise, and it worked out. We looked at the uh, examples already in the book on the book. Numbers in names. This will be an interesting one for you. If you have a business name, this is at the bottom of page 70 and on to 71. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 bullets for this rule. Numbers, if they are spelled out, so the word one, sometimes you see it as the number of one, sometimes you see it as the word O-N-E, correct? If it is spelled out O-N-E, you file it. O-N-E, it comes after N and before P, right? But however, if it's, if it's written in a digit, the number one, that goes in numerical order in front of all the alphabet. So if it was the number one, the number two, the number three, that would come before the letter A. All those would. 
Arabic. What's the difference between an Arabic and a Roman numeral? What do we normally write in? We're Arabic. We write Arabic numbers. Roman numerals, what do those look like? There is a nice little figure down here at the bottom of page 70, which shows you all the Roman numerals. So the rule states, when we're talking about this numerical order thing, we're going to take all of our Arabic numbers before we take any Roman numerals. So we'll, we're going to file all Arabic numbers, then we're going to file all Roman numeral numbers, then we're going to file words. Inclusive numbers. Only the first digits are used. Can you think of a company name or anything that would be an inclusive number? Fifth Third Bank. We would drop that slash and just file it as 53. Or would we take just the 5? I think in that case, because it's a piece of punctuation, we would take the whole number. The third, um, and file it under 53. The only kind that ever comes to my mind for this situation is you ever go to a street address and it's 515 through 519 Bostwick? That's what I think of for an inclusive. Uh, the example written in your book is 20 to 39 Singles Club. I don't know that company. I can't think of one around here that does that. But if you run into that, you're basically, this time, you're not going to ignore the hyphen and run it together. You're going to drop the hyphen and the other number. So in the book, the example is 20 to thir hyphen 39 singles club. So we want to, down here at the bottom, it's 20 hyphen 39. You want to just do it at 20. You're going to file it in 20. Correct. The question is, if there was another 20 already in the folder, we what do we move to second? And the answer is the singles, the word singles. It'd be, it'd be filed under 20, singles club. That's one a little crazy, but, you know, there we are. So, what's an ordinal number? Example right here in the book and on the screen says ST. First, 1ST, 2D, 5TH. Those alphabet characters that are put after a number are called ordinals. First, third, fifth, third. We, we ignore the ordinals and it becomes a number. Um, first bank, first street, those would all get filed under the number one, provided they were written in digits. If the number's linked to a word or a character, for example, A1 repair, you know all those all those gimmicks people use to get their names up to the top of the alphabet list in the Google searches, uh, then it becomes a single unit. That one would be the letter A, the number one all together. So A1 would come before AA or AB. Correct. If something was one some, something, uh, one stop shopping. If it's one hyphen stop, it becomes one STOP is the key unit. Seven elevenths. Is that an inclusive then? It was seven hyphen eleven. 
I would consider that an inclusive that you would drop. Actually, hold still. Hold still. We're not quite done there. We're not done there. There is um, one of the bullet points says 123 market would be coded as 123. So 711 would actually be coded as 711. Here's examples. We have the key seven days market. 17th Avenue Fashion comes to 17. These are shown in your book on page 72. 21 clubs, 50 in the percent symbol. Member symbols get written out. So it's 50% is your key word, key unit. 65 plus, same thing, plus gets written out and run together. 405 auto. Here's the 500 to the 510 princess court. Just goes under 500. You drop the hyphen 510. Here's number eight. It's our example with the word the moves to the end. Number nine, What what is this? Roman numeral what? 21. This gets filed after all the Arabic numbers and before any alphabet. See that? It's, it's after all the Arabic numbers, but it's before any alphabet. Fourth dimension spelled out. Highway 18 Cafe. So the second digit, if there is more than one highway, 18 would come before any alphabet characters would get filed first. Now they're making us think. Let's, let's go check out what we can do with uh, self-check for rule number seven. All right, so that was very invigorating time figuring that out. Rule eight. This is on page 74 of your textbook. This is our last rule we're learning in this chapter, and then we're going to talk about more cross-reference situations. So you know how we said that you file company business names exactly the way they're written unless they have the word the in front of them? It's still true. It doesn't matter if you're a financial institution, a club, a college, a hospital, a hotel, a lodge, a magazine, blah, 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 blah. Whatever they put on there is what you write. First National Bank, using the rules we did, we learned, we drop the ST after the one, and it becomes one National Bank. American Quilters Museum, exactly. Associated Auctioneers, exactly. Bank of the West, yep. Billings Community College, yep. DeLong, we learned that uh, particles get run together. DeLong is one word, Seaside Motel. So we have a whole rule dedicated to reminding you that no matter what it is, it goes in order you see it. I like this rule. Let's pause here and go take a self-check on it and see if we can figure that out to be true. So that was rule eight. Now, we already learned some reasons to cross-reference. Who can tell me any of them? Why would we do some cross-referencing? Hyphenated last names, unusual names. I think there were four of them. More than one name and like a business. Changed names. I like that idea. That would be a C also. No, that would be a C. Yes. I'm going with yes. I like it. Those four. We're going to add to that list. So in the flow chart that you haven't done yet that you're about to do, you want to address these situations, and we'll talk more about it in just a moment. So on page 77, we're going to add in reasons to, um, oh, we also did abbreviations and acronyms, business names. So this chapter, we're going to go about popular coin names, hyphenated names, sub divisions, and subsidiaries, changed names, and similar names. So first thing we want to know, popular and coin names. You're going to file under the official name and cross-reference the popular name. For example, on page 78 of your textbook, 
We say Fred Meyer One Stop Shopping. The cross reference is Freddy's. We call it going to Freddy's. Everybody says let's meet at Freddy's. Let's go to Freddy's. So you have a piece of letterhead that says it is Fred Meyer One Stop Shopping. That is the official way to cross reference it. And then you, the way that every, I mean, to file it. That's the official way to file it. And then you would write a cross reference card for Freddy's and tell everybody to go look at Fred Meyer One Stop Shopping. The question is coming up how do we know? As I said, you will have a piece of letterhead that says that's their company name, or maybe an invoice you get from them. I had this situation once where somebody told me, we'll get a hold of Omnibus at uh, MSU and do this and do this. And I came back to him and said, I can't find any person named that. Turned out to be a whole department. Okay? Kind of thing, and I learned. Uh, same type of scenario here. If it's something that you often refer to it by, make sure you have a note. And in this case, it's called a cross reference that says, people, FYI, you call it Freddy's, but that's not where all the paperwork is. Go over and see Fred Meyer One Stop Shopping. Smitty's, same thing. It's actually Smith's Home Style Eatery. So that's where the file is. The question in the classroom is, will this be like how the Bob is part of the Gilmore collection? Actually, we'll, we'll get into that in subsidiaries and divisions that word subsidiaries and divisions uh, I would think it'd fall better under that than it would a popular name because our building is literally called the Bob all right so hyphenated names still same thing under official name cross-reference each surname in the combination Jolly Reardon Consulting you need a cross-reference for Reardon Jolly Heckman O'Connor tour guides you need a cross-reference so if somebody looks up O'Connor Tour Guides, they can find it and see that it's actually Heckman. Here we have the divisions and subsidiaries. Use it directly under the division or branch name. Cross-reference the parent company. So here, Rico Business Systems is a division of Rico USA. The cross-reference is Rico USA C Rico Business Systems. So back to our question about the Gilmore Collection. We never really deal with the Gilmore Collection itself, right? We deal with the individual restaurants, the Bob, Red Ball Jet, um, Blue Water Grill, Angiamos, is that a Gilmore's? all those other places we deal with those so we're gonna put the paperwork under each one of those and if somebody comes in and wants to know about the Gilmore collection we're gonna have a cross-reference that says Gilmore collection go see one of these blah 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 if they change their name they file the records under new names I actually had a student in class that uh, changed their name already and now they're gonna change it back <laughs> Enjoy filing that one, people. Um, so you file records under the current name, the legal name, but make a cross-reference about the former name and it shows where to go. So singular wireless, that's now AT&T, right? So we want to say C, singular. Actually, isn't that backwards? Didn't singular become AT&T? So the correct name is AT&T? That's, so AT&T is the new name. So records should be under the new name. So this example is backwards. All right. But the Hershey Company along the way changed their name to Hershey Foods Corporation. Now wait a minute. They used to be Hershey Foods Corporation. Now this is messing me up. Somebody better Google this. What's the name of Hershey's? We'll come back to this. Mm -hmm. Similar names. This is not a, a usual cross-reference of C, blah, 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 blah. This is a C also. So Allstate Insurance. It could be spelled Allstate two words. 
Southeast distribution could be spelled southeast one word, opposite of the way it is. So this is a C also. This is like going to the yellow pages and you're looking in the list for what kind of things you have going on and it tells you to go see also this stuff. Mm -hmm. Other places that you can look for what you're doing. All right, so the answer we have in the classroom, it Googled it, and the Hershey Co. is the current name. So Hershey Foods Corporations at one point changed their name to the Hershey Co. So that is correct, but we don't agree with Singular Wireless because we don't have those anymore. All we have is AT&T. So really should it should be opposite. Yeah. The coded filing segment should be AT&T, and the cross-reference should be Singular Wireless C AT&T. Mm -hmm. That's what we agree. Uh, this is a relatively new book. Because uh, I don't think um, those are all state. That is the end of Chapter 2 Concepts. Let's go do us a self-check for cross-referencing and move forward.